I couldn't say no to this. This is a Sanyo Industrial Beige uh, time-lapse video recorder. It's an SRT6000. Looks fairly fully featured. These will flip down doors on either side. It's got a jog shuttle wheel. Ooh, the rubber is starting to turn to that sticky goop. Uh, my experience with this is that there's really nothing you can do. You keep taking it off, it'll just keep breaking down. So you put a coat of like clear coat or something on it or just live with the stickiness. Anyway, let's power this on. All right, it's plugged in. Found a nice matching white cord for the industrial beige. This of course has BNC connectors on the back. So just have a little adapter. Had some weird broken off what's remaining of RCA connectors and the audio jacks. Had to pull those off with some pliers. Okay, so it appears to be on. I have no signal at all, so let's grab a tape. This is just some random old tape. Oh. I guess it's determining the tape position. So let's hit play. Not bad. Picture looks pretty decent for uh, this is EP, I think. Doesn't really say, but that's most likely recorded in EP. Kitchen since, since you were married. So we'll do well, fast forward. Next Rewind scan. Oh, that's so sticky. To do it today, Vera. Stop. Pay a menu. Yeah, okay. So I got a menu on here. Oh, alarm mode, vertical sync, external time adjust, tape mode in. It's got a lot of features. Field four, timing, field, six hour. I might even need to read the manual for this. So a lot going on here. So this was probably, I'm going to say, late 90s, early 2000s, meant to go inside of a store. It's constantly recording. You could set all the you know, holiday dates, what time to stop, start recording different amounts of video on screen. It's not doing anything right now. Timer. So if I hit play... Can adjust the tracking. Of a mess, no, of course not. But it'll take all afternoon to move your animals out of the way. My pets won't... Yeah, I don't want to play too much of that in case that's a thing that'll hit, but that seems to work. Ah, speed. So, that's the speed. I'm assuming that's hours. So that's six hour mode, 18, 30. So what if I hit play in 30 hour mode? Okay, you can go six hour. That's 18 hour, 30 hour. So now this is saying 30 hour on a T120, which would be 40 hour on a T160. So it'd be eight, 24, 40? I think 24, yeah, whatever, or 20. Uh, do 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 counter. So on screen is not doing anything, but I think I might need to set an input up here. And luckily I have an input for it. Isn't that beautiful? I went and set up a cheap old analog security camera outside. I have this coax going from F to RCA to BNC, and then just ran some wires going to a cheapy power supply I built decades ago as a child. Somehow still working. And yes, we have some video. Actually, I'm all over the place here. Let's try an SP tape. So 
So far, the video heads looked good. That picture looked a lot cleaner than the RCA that I did a while ago. See if this just works as a regular old VCR. Oh yeah, it's got to do its back and forth thing. Speed. Oh yeah. Two. Twelve. Twenty-four. So what this does is this slices up the recording speed. So this being an SP recorded tape that I was playing back, the numbers on the front changed. Like when I do that, see this will change to two. And then I can go 12 and 24. So this depends on the size of the tape and the recording speed. So by that reasoning, if I take a T160 and pop it in here, then this should give me the option for 40. Luckily, I have just such a tape right here. That actually sounds quite unhappy. Probably needs a lubrication or a, maybe the belt's a little sad. Okay. So still, oh, well, no, still says 30. So if I hit play, it's still set to 30. Okay, so is there, oh. Tape select, Chad T160, now it's set to 40. So you have to manually tell it what size tape is in here. I like how there's audio with the slow speed. Before I go too far, see all these little black flecks here. I believe that's from the foam on this automatic head cleaner. Go into the pile the graveyard of automatic head cleaners and now we can use it okay so we are recording on 30 hour mode so this is five times what you would get on EP. So this is essentially EP, but a fifth of the frames. So that would bring it down to like 12. I will see you in half an hour. All right, let's see how this worked out. I've recorded for, I don't know, about half an hour. You can see this is slowly... See, it's moving in a linear fashion though, which is quite interesting. So that means that theoretically it's just got real muffled audio. I'm, I'm really curious. Stop. And we will rewind a little bit. That shows seven minutes. Rewind back to maybe three. And let's see what we got. We got video, let's pick the speed, so that's full speed, that's 18 hours, that's 30 hours. Now what's interesting is there's no audio, but when I was playing other stuff back there was, oh no I have it muted, stupid me. That's insane! So I can fit 30 hours of playable video on a T120 with quite possibly the worst linear audio I've ever heard on a VCR ever, and very chunky video. Oh, this is flipping cool. Ah, oh, what can I do with this? 
Do I put like a music video on there or I'm going to find something fun to record on this and then capture it and play it back. Cause that's, so the last, uh, time-lapse VCR I used actually moved. It just would advance and do a field. This actually does proper, essentially super slow motion, which is not what I was expecting. Five times slower than EP. Fifteen times slower than SP. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, that's all I'm going to play because, like, you know, copyright and stuff. Holy crap, this is cool. Uh, let's see what I can record. The door, blast the window, and be afraid. Be very, very afraid. Because he's coming. The terror of the neighborhood. What is that? Is that? Yes, it is. Yes? Right, again. Dead. This is a clue. In an all new, fight your future life movie. Coming fall 1998. Who be you on Zombie Island? It's Scooby Doo's first feature length movie. Available only on video. Good lord, this is bad. It's stretched to widescreen because I'm capturing this. Uh, <laughs> the sound is just. It's so it, it what the, the quality of this reminds me of those you know late nineties real player video files that you used to be able to download that were you know maybe four hundred k. I keep hearing, and they would be twenty four by thirty six pixels or something ridiculous, five frames per second, and the audio was was practically non-existent, just scratchy and nothing. That's this. This is awesome. Yeah, I don't know how useful that audio would be in a security environment because you would maybe hear like, if someone breaks a window, you would kind of hear that or some yelling or something, but it really wouldn't be that useful. Uh, that audio is just atrocious. In terms of other features, uh, I believe this is all related to the on-screen display. So I can turn that back on and I can shift where it is around. Oh, that, what? Down, over, down, cool. And it doesn't, these don't do anything. It's just this. Shift down, shift over. Timer. Ah! That puts it into timer mode. I guess I have to have everything set up for that. Record, repeat, which would just mean it just keeps re rewinding and recording over itself. The tape select, which tells you how much you can fit on the tape. Now, alarm, I believe, is set. So duration, you can program in a duration to 20 seconds, or I don't know what that is. And then what speed? So these these speeds are assuming a T160 tape. Eight hours would be EP. 24 hours would be the mid mode, and I don't know what NC is. Probably the one I've been playing with, the 40 hour mode. Uh, record button, eject the two big buttons that you'd use in a business environment. Put new tape in. Hit record. Eject to take old tape out. Over here, there's a search button. So I guess you can search at this probably like an index. Oh, no, nope, that didn't. So I don't know, press search a few times. All scan. Yeah, there's a whole bunch going on there that I just don't know. Like I said, lots of features on here. Can do a lot of cool stuff. I wonder how much this cost when it was new. Wouldn't have been cheap.
and considering the quality you get out of the video. Like, I'm wondering. So, for each field of video, you do swipe, swipe, swipe. So, this seems to, it's got to have like a memory buffer or something. Like, if I... It's pretty instant. Oh wait, no, that's playing on full. Let me slow it down. Like when I touch the head, it's instant. I'm just trying to see if there's maybe a memory buffer that it reads a frame and then puts it into memory and then reads another one. Because the picture's perfect. There's no noise at all, no matter what I do. This is just excellent. Yeah, as far as the inside, being a commercial product, it has a nice separated power supply for easy service. Uh, but it's also new enough that it's just got the one board with the mechanism sitting on top. It's got all the video processing on the back here and got some extra stuff here. This riser board probably has a lot of the uh, time-lapse related stuff on it. I mean, it's a modern VCR. It's pretty boring. Hey, there's the beeper. Let's turn the beeper on. And if we take a look at the back, it's got the nice IEC power connector here. Sanyo Electric. SRT6000 time-lapse video recorder. Made in Japan. Yeah, pretty standard. And your connections. So you have an RS-232 jack. Uh, can do 485. There's a dressing, so yeah, two, 485 or 232, assuming through the same port. Oh no, wait, no, 485 goes through these RJ11 jacks. And that's for setting up your address, for communicating with other equipment, remote, mic in. Okay, so you can have the mic come in separately, or you do audio in, which are RCA jacks, and these are... Take this adapter off. These are B and C, because it's a commercial video product. And you have all these extra connections. Warning out, tape and sensor, so that can set an alarm if you get to the end of the tape. Switched out, common, alarm in and out, exterior timer in, clock set? Huh. Clock set in, out, series in, out. Yeah, ooh, eject. So you can remotely eject it. Push open. Oh, is this a... Uh, this is a big-ass coin cell battery. Hmm. This looks soldered on. So yeah, you have a big-ass coin cell uh, battery backup battery for, I guess, all your settings. And I'm assuming the head hours are stored somewhere in the menu. Let's see if I can find that. Oh, here we go. Use time. So the video head has been used for 2200 hours. I mean, that's kind of high, but it seems to be working just fine. It's been on for 68,000 hours, though. I think that works out to just under eight years of non-stop use, which would be reasonable, I think, for how long something like this would be on before we get replaced with something newer. It's in remarkably good shape, so I can't see this thing having been used 24-7. That's neat. It's got a clog detection. So if your video head gets clogged, it will tell you. Probably send out an alarm to something. So you can change all these settings. I use the down arrow. So field. So that's which field it's using when it's recording, I guess. Field, frame, oh, that's cool. Yeah, this is stuff that's well beyond me. Just interjecting here regarding that uh, frame field setting. That's related to the SW outer switch out terminal. This is when connecting to something else like a camera switcher. And what you can do is you can change when the pulse happens. So on which field or which frame. Here's the uh, recording information according to the manual so you can see the 8 24 hour and 40 hour modes on a t160 which is what it advertises 
or if you use a standard T120, you have six 18 and 30 hour modes like I was showing. And it shows the recording interval. So on a normal eight hour or six hour, which is EP mode, you have 1 60th. So you basically have 60 fields per second. 24 hour mode, you have 20 fields per second. 40 hour mode, you have 5 60th of a second recording interval, which works out to 12 frames per second, or 12 fields per second, sorry. So 60 fields per second, 20 fields per second, 12 fields per second which explains why it looks very choppy, like a, you know, early internet video. And for all of these, audio recording is possible because the tape motion is continuous. Just for comparison, this is the recording chart for a higher end model, the SRT7072. You can see it's got two extra recording modes there, but they do not have audio because they are not continuous. So that was my uh, little look at this time-lapse VCR. I think it's pretty neat. Seems to be in great shape. I have done nothing to it other than remove the auto head cleaner. The guides seem to be moving a lot better now. I think it's just because it was sitting for a while. It needed to kind of work itself in. I have touched no belts, nothing like that, and it works just great. And this is the new reigning champion for fitting the most amount of continuous video with audio on a tape because this is 15 times slower than SP. That uh, Panasonic VCR I looked at, that had VP recorded a fifth. This is a 15th the speed of SP. Now the sacrifice with that, of course, is that you get 12 fields per second instead of 60. And I'm starting to think that what it does is it just scans each field an additional like five times, right? Basically it's recording the field or frame once, but then on playback, it's playing it back multiple times. And that's why you get that sort of jitteriness on those modes because it's playing back the same field multiple times and there might be a little bit of error between them. That's just my theory. I mean, if someone knows exactly what's going on, one other thought I had was that this has a buffer inside, but year 2000 that would have been pretty fancy and it doesn't really look like it's got any sort of digital processing on there when i was playing with a video head it looked pretty live anyway i've made some recordings off tv to test this out so enjoy let's bring in meteorologist peter quinlan now to talk about that heat yesterday peter record breaking yeah in the city of winnipeg and 18 locations across southern manitoba i'll show you that in a moment we'll start with a look outside to the capital ford lincoln roof town quite a bit of instability around out there pockets of showers thunderstorms as well but yesterday winnipeg hit 37 degrees along with more than winkler winnipeg recording the hottest coming up canada's first soda tax coming to newfoundland and labrador but the policy it's already getting pushed back. There's no sugarcoating this next story. Stay with us. Watch out. If your vehicle comes in contact with a down power line, know what to do. Stay inside your vehicle and call 911. Warn others to stay away and wait for emergency crew. Safety, it's in your hands. I'm the producer of Sriracha Hot Sauce. In California has suspended production due to a shortage of hot peppers. Oh, no. Yeah, the <laughs> scarcity is actually due to farming disruptions caused by drought. Yeah, and it's causing Some concern for the rest of the U.S. and Canada, which rely heavily on California for fruits and vegetables. And I have saying tells us more. It's limiting the amount of ground that we can farm. It's, the amount, it's limiting the amount of the intensity that we can farm. California farmers are struggling in the third year of the worst drought on record, le leading to water restrictions for farmers. The change in climate has caught up with the world famous Sriracha hot sauce this summer. High Farm Foods, its producer in California, has suspended production after extreme heat and drought hit the hot pepper crops the company uses. And finally, what does it look like when I play a recording that was done in the slowest speed on? the time-lapse VCR on a normal VCR, like this trusty old RCA that I keep going back to. 
the Sheba Maid. You can see uh, when I turn the display on there that it's seeing it as an SLP or EP recording, which kind of matches what we are seeing here. The pause seems to have quite a few dropouts, but uh, when I hit play the dropouts, oh no, they're there. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.